Good morning. It is February 19th, 11 a.m. on Saturday here at Burnett Branch Library. My name is Lori Stone. I'm the state representative for the 28th House District, which includes Western Warren and all of Centerline. Thank you for joining me this morning. It will be Friday, February 25th. This will be an online roundtable. It will be from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. And there is a registration that went out in our e-newsletter online. And it is for anyone with a small business connection. If you are a small business owner, if you're interested, if you wanna help with small businesses in the community, we know COVID was disproportionately impacted small businesses. We know that we had many small businesses close. Um, and we know that small businesses are the backbone of employment. We know that small businesses are uh, providers of essential services and products. And so we want to make sure that we revitalize and innovate our small business communities. We um, will be hosting, um, we will be hosting special guests from MEDC, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, SBAM, the Small, Small Business Association of Michigan, Macomb County Planning and Economic Development, Macomb County Chamber of Commerce, and information will be provided from the Center for Inno Innovation and Entrepreneurship in Macomb County. We know that COVID um, federal funds have been allocated to help our small businesses. We wanna make sure our small businesses know that they're there, how to apply for them and how to use them so that they um, have opportunities to improve. If you know someone who's interested, the link went out in our e-news. Uh, if you put them in contact with our office, lauristone@house.mi.gov. We will get that link out to them so they can apply to be a part of this. Uh, it is so important that we get this information out. And just back up a hot minute. Um, Saturday, March 19th, will be our community conversation at 11 a.m. at Centerline Public Library. April 23rd will be our community conversation at 11 a.m. at Coonan's, we will do a Pints and Politics, which seems very popular. So mark your calendars, save the dates, come out and join in person. We will continue to have a streaming option for those who are not comfortable uh, participating in community conversations in person. Uh, let's continue on with the agenda. Today, we'd, I'd like to touch on the My Community Survey. So we know that we have ARPA dollars and other federal funds still sitting in Washington, D.C. that are Michigan taxpayer dollars that have been earmarked to come back home to Michigan to help support crucial parts of our economy like small businesses, like public education. And so we know that it is important we would also like public input to make sure that those taxpayer dollars are going to where we know they need to be. We know that infrastructure needs to be shorn up. We know that there are gaps in broadband um, access to internet. And by participating in the Invest in My Community Survey, my being Michigan, um, you have the opportunity to weigh, on, weigh in on how those taxpayer dollars are being spent. Uh, in light of tax day on its way, we know that um, it is unlikely that there will be an extension for filing your taxes for a third year in a row. Um, so we need to plan ahead. You have a little over two months, just about two months to plan and we have some handy dandy brochures on tax preparation and understanding what taxes you exemptions you might be eligible for and so if you reach out to my office you will have the opportunity we will send it to you it is no additional charge 
and um, would like to get that information out. Legislative update from Lansing. We have been busy. We, uh, I'm part of the Michigan Labor Caucus and recently we unveiled a plan to put our Michigan workers first package out. It is a 34 bill package aimed at restoring organizing, collective bargaining, and workers' rights. Specifically, I have a bill that I've sponsored in this package, but I've co-sponsored, will be co-sponsoring all of them. And mine is restoring the reasonable and just cause for discharging standard for the Teacher Tenure Act. Um, this bill package gives our educators and all workers who are organizing uh, a strong voice in the workplace. It helps to create stronger learning environments for our students so they can read and achieve. I'm pleased to announce that House Bill 5477, the Kratom Consumer Protection and Regulatory Act, was initiated and will be uh, receiving a hearing in the regulatory committee, regulatory reform committee on Tuesday morning, um, which takes place at 1030. If anyone would like to join virtually, uh, the committee is streamed at HouseNet. The Kratom Consumer Act regulates Kratom, which is not a widely known substance, but is a substance that has been problematic nevertheless. It is uh, native to Southeast Asia, and the leaves contain compounds that have psychotropic or opioid type effects. Um, it's often used in the health and wellness community. Um, sometimes it's, it's marketed to give you more energy. Sometimes it's marketed to mellow you out and calm you down. Um, the problem is how well do you know what you're putting in your body are you aware of the important side effects? Are you aware of the dosage? How much is too much? And are you aware that this is a product that has the potential to become addictive? Um, it's often marketed as the holistic alternative for opioid uh, abuse recovery. So if you'd like to know more about Kratom, there will be more going out. Uh, and I'm excited and hope that, that this advances um, once we have an informational hearing in the Regulatory Reform Committee. Let's see. We know that now that um, unemployment benefits have wound down for many people in the state of Michigan, even though we are still as an office helping support community members who are struggling to navigate unemployment, um, determinations, appeals, that People are still um, facing difficulty paying bills, paying rent, paying mortgages, um, keeping utilities on, and a piece of the COVID dollars helps to support families and individuals who are struggling through COVID with this. So if you need more information on how to access these funds, how they're being used locally in our communities, um, reach out to our, our office. We'd be happy to get you some more information. We have for our college bond, bound students and um, students looking for post uh, education, post graduation information. The Michigan FAFSA application, well, federal aid application, is coming up on March first. So just a couple weeks ago, away, we don't want anyone to miss out on um, low rate loans, uh, potential grants and other information. Make sure that you get your uh, application filed as soon as possible. The state of Michigan's treasury student aid team is offering three virtual uh, financial aid nights coming up on February 22nd, February 23rd, and February 24th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. This will walk you through the FAFSA application information, federal financial aid programs, state financial aid programs, 
scholarship searching resources. Um, these are free and open to the public. Please register for these. The registration links are available. We can get those out to you if you did not already receive this month's e-news. We also have some additional brochures available that can be sent out to you. Let's see. February is Heart Health Month. We want you, along with the American Heart Association, to make sure that you are embracing healthy habits um, and keeping in mind those things that will help you um, if you are facing heart disease or to prevent heart disease. We know that reducing stress levels, keeping moving, uh, eating healthy, minding blood pressure and other chronic health conditions can, and can help keep you healthy and prevent heart disease. Um, and it's also important to learn skills like CPR because you never know when you might encounter someone who is experiencing a heart attack and is in need of assistance. And by being experienced with CPR, you can render that aid and uh, give them the opportunity to get the medical assistance they need to keep their heart beating a little longer. So if um, heart health is something that you're interested in, visit the American Heart Association. Coming up on February 28th, we will be uh, hosting a vet veterans listening tour uh, as part of a virtual uh, tour that the Michigan House Democrats are hosting statewide. And this is an opportunity for veterans in our community and people who care about veterans to weigh in on benefits, needs, and uh, the potential to improve resources and services for our veterans. So I encourage anyone who is interested to mark the calendar. It will be from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. on February 28th. March's reading month is coming up. I'm looking forward to spending time in our schools Mondays and Fridays when I'm in district, visiting with our students, our teachers, our buildings, and getting firsthand uh, updates on what exciting things are happening in our classrooms, what needs are being requested for um, support, and ways that I can uh, advocate for our community and our school in Lansing. Well, that winds down the informational updates from Lansing. And I see that we have some guests who are, have joined us today. And I'd love to hear questions, comments, concerns from you, suggestions for focuses for future community conversations or town halls. Portia, are, do you see anything posted in the chat? I appreciate the Macomb County Democrats for passing a resolution asking for Joe Biden and the Department of Justice to conduct a full and fair independent investigation into the charges against Shelby protesters. It is important, our right to expression, our right to peaceably assemble, our right to freedom of speech um, are the cornerstones of a community, making sure that um, they hold government accountable um, and speak out on potential injustices. 
And so if those protesters were handled, um, the protesters' arrests were handled in a way that um, is not consistent with their rights, that um, absolutely oversight should be, uh, should be, you know, consider, considered. Wonderful. Any other questions this morning? Well, hopefully everybody's hibernating after uh, being through the most recent storm. Yes, what do we got? One more question from Emily. Hi, Emily. Let's see. Bail reform, absolutely. I am a co-sponsor on the bail reform bills. I believe in um, decriminalization for um, areas that are over-regulated um, and over-criminalized that disproportionately affect communities. Um, um, I'd have to check for an update with the bill's sponsors on where they are. We've had some fantastic bipartisan uh, work on decriminalization and criminal, uh, criminal justice reform. Uh, we've had uh, tremendous work between the Justice Committee chairperson and co-chairperson and the minority vice chair um, who have put up some, uh, some fantastic bills that um, to address some of these issues uh, that disproportionately impact uh, certain communities and they've done a lot to reform it. These are evidence-based, data-based, um, that suggest, that um, lead into what we know and um, would, would not put the public at a disproportionate risk. We know that sometimes um, criminal justice uh, disproportionately impacts socioeconomic communities and racial communities. And so um, I believe that these, I'm trying to remember where they are, in the, the lineup, but I am very hopeful that they will get a hearing. Um, but I always encourage everyone, don't wait for government to do something for you, demand it of your elected officials. So you have the opportunity to call the office or email um, the decision makers and the agenda share setters, our judiciary chair is um, Graham Filler of DeWitt Township. Um, he's done a wonderful job ushering in criminal justice reform. Our uh, minority vice chair, Dave Legrand, has worked closely with him to um, create some innovative decriminalization efforts. And uh, if you email them and let them know how important this legislation is to you, um, we can put public pressure to move this legislation. So I encourage you to take the time and uh, reach out. How else are we, how are we doing? Fantastic. Community advocacy is some of the most important piece of um, moving legislation through. So if you have an issue you care about, be that voice, be that advocate. Let's see. I think that this is a request for not stateside. Um, feel free to follow up with me after uh, our community conversation. Stateside events and non-stateside events have to stay separate. Well, I so appreciate the opportunity. Um, community conversations are uh, crucial for accountability and transparency with your government and your elected officials. And so uh, I appreciate this opportunity to hear from you about what's the most important things going on in your life and your community so I can be a better advocate in Lansing. I appreciate this opportunity to weigh in on uh, and update you on what I've been working on in Lansing as well as in district 
And I look forward to seeing you again March 19th. It will be at Centerline Public Library. And I hope you can enjoy me in, join me in person. If not, we'll continue to offer a virtual option as well. Have a great weekend.